What is the most important thing you've ever forgotten at home? Was it your keys, right? Your wallet, your phone, maybe you locked yourself out and you couldn't get back inside or um, you went to the store, you bought groceries and realized you don't have any money. You had to put all your groceries away, go back home and get money uh, to come back and do it all over again. Since it's, it's pretty um, stressful, right? To forget things at home or generally to forget things. Maybe you are someone that gets um, really guilty, feels really guilty or gets stressed out um, when you forget something. And um, I want to kind of share a passage where God speaks about forgetting and how he forgets. And that's in Isaiah 44 verses 21 and 22. It says, Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for you are my servant. I have formed you, you are my servant. O Israel, you will not be forgotten by me. I have blotted out like a thick cloud your transgressions and like a cloud your sins. Return to me for I have redeemed you. In the passage before that, God actually spoke of the foolishness of idolatry. And here he urges Israel not to forget these words. And he promises them that um, they, as a nation, they will not be, forgot, be forgotten by God. And in verse 21, he says, I will not forget you or you will not be forgotten, right? And forgetting can really uh, happen unconsciously or also consciously, right? If you forget something unconsciously, that means you mean to remember, you want to remember, but you, do, you don't, right? You end up forgetting. Consciously, right, you can decide that you don't want to remember something anymore and you make that decision to kind of put it out of your mind. Um, God reassures Israel here in verse 21 that he decides not to forget them, right? This is a promise that he will be faithful in the future. And actually, God speaks of that again in Isaiah 49 verse 15. It says, Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. And it kind of make me laugh um, reading this passage where God said that um, a woman might forget her child. And you might have stories like that. Uh, I definitely have some stories about my dad forgetting to picking me up from um, trombone practice, right? And um, he just meant well, right? But he, he forgot and then I'd have to walk home or someone else gave me a ride. And coming home, my dad would be going, around, uh, going about his business, right? Um, either being at work or um, being cooking or something like that. And then when he saw me, he all of a sudden, you know, remembered that he was supposed to pick me up and he was chuckling and saying, oops, right? And we have that nature as we forget things, right? Um, but God doesn't casually promise you that he will show up for you and then forget you um, and then just say, oops, right? And we all are guilty of forgetting, forgetting others, forgetting to show up for others, right? But actually God is not, right? Um, and you know, for you personally, you might have been, you know, praying for a change in your life and God seems to be silent and there's no answer, right? And no sign that your situation will get ever better, right? But God is telling you today, you will not be forgotten by me, right? Trust God that he will show up for you because he will, right? He said so. He also says in verse 22 that he has blotted out like a thick cloud your transgression. What's that mean to blot out? It means to obliterate transgression from one's memory. And God has decided that he would forget your transgression. And before we learned that God decided not to forget you, but he actually decided to forget the wrong that you've done against him. That's what the Hebrew tells us, right? The Hebrew tells us that um, transgression is something we commit against God. And God uses this picture of sweeping a thick cloud almost like out of the way and that's how he sweeps away the memory of transgression that was done to him against him by you um, psalm 32 verse 1 says blessed is he whose transgressions is forgiven are forgiven right whose sins are covered blessed is the man to whom the lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit right um, I have a friend that says when things go wrong, ah, we're just doing our best. And one time I answered her, 
well, we could certainly do a little better, right? And we kind of laughed at that situation, but you know, that's kind of like how we, um, we think about ourselves, right? You know, I need to do better because I disappointed God yesterday, right? Or I was rude to my family members, or I ended up gossiping about someone at work and it really hurt their feelings. And I got myself into like a little mess. Not just that, but I know it's not what God wants me to do. My actions didn't honor God, right? And we find ourselves just really thinking about the things we've done, the wrong we have done, right? And how we acted and we don't like that about ourselves, right? And these sins are just kind of weighing us down. And maybe the sin you remember is a little bit farther in, the, in your past, but it is really weighing you down, right? It really defines how you live your life today. You feel guilty, right? And you feel ashamed for your trespasses against God, right? But God tells you today that he has decided to sweep away the memory of your sins against him. A couple of years ago, I went to um, a grocery store here in Japan and I was shopping and then a woman came up to me and just called out my name. She said, hey, Anna, right? And her face was so joyful and she drew me into this big hug and I was like, hey, how are you doing? Right? And in my mind, I was like, oh no, who is this lady? Right? What is happening? And this woman was so kind, right? She was talking to me and telling me how she's doing, what happened in her life, right? And how glad she was to see me. She was so friendly. But I was in my mind, I was frantic and thinking, who is this lady, right? And then I started praying, Lord, you need to help me. I don't remember who this is. I don't even know what context we met in, right? But she knows my name. And then the Holy Spirit kind of showed me, gave me this faint memory of her coming to the church and sitting in the cafe with me. And, you know, God really had my back there. And, um, you know, I was forgetful. I'm forgetful. That's rude, right? Like if we just don't remember people that we meet um, and we're not conscious of, of people, right, and our relationships with them. But God is not like that, right? God chooses not to keep the memory of our transgression, right? Um, therefore, Romans 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Right? God has not forgotten us, but He chooses to forgive our transgressions. And in the same sentence here, um, God tells us, Return to me, for I have redeemed you, in verse 22. Right? This redeeming, right, is pretty cool. God is, has saved us. But I want to focus on this returning to the Lord. Returning uh, something to someone else means to give back at, or to restore, right? And it, it really shows that you who are, you know, possessing something, you give um, this thing back to the original owner. Um, and that really transfers to who we are, right? Uh, we belong to the Lord. So let me ask you, have you lived your life um, in the past, right, in this past week, even today, um, like you belong to the Lord, right? If not, do you want to return to the Lord? Do you want to live like you belong to the Lord, right? Do you want to be on fire for God again? Well, how do you do that? How do you return to the Lord? Hosea 14 verse 2 actually tells us how we can do it. It says, take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, take away all iniquity. Receive us graciously, for we will offer the sacrifices of our lips. And uh, the Bible commentator David Guzik, he comments on that. And he says, it is not enough to sit before the Lord and feel love towards him. Instead, take words with you. Tell God that you love him. It isn't enough to feel repentance before the Lord. Instead, take words with you and tell God you repent before Him. They're um, changing the water pipes in my building. Thank you guys, but also impeccable timing, right? But I'll keep going, right? So if you haven't lived like you belong to God, return to Him, right? Give yourself to Him again. Not just by having good intentions, right? Not just by coming before God just feeling sorry for what you've done but you know with words of confession and repentance right in today's age you know we'd rather email we'd rather text than call anybody right speak to someone on the phone that's pretty scary um, 
if I can call, um, sorry, if I can email customer service instead of calling them, I'm happy. I'll do it right away. I'll wait for two, two days for an answer, right? But our pastor, Pastor Tommy, often tells, tell, tells us, call him up, right? Give him a call right now. And we Bible college interns, we're often like, oh, no, I'll just text them, right? And we get in trouble because we don't really want to call. We don't really want to talk to people, right? Um, in the same way, you know, we could handle our problems like that. We could handle our sins like that, right? We'd rather leave a text for God, right? Or an email and kind of wait and see. But, you know, it is important and it is necessary to speak to God personally, to come before Him with our words, right? And to rededicate our lives to Him through our words, right? So just in this short portion here, we're reminded of God's goodness toward us, right? He has not forgotten us, right? He's faithful to show up for us, right? He sees our situation. He's telling us today, you are not forgotten. I have not forgotten you, right? So he always is ready to forgive us, right? And he calls us to return to him if we've strayed from him. And I want to kind of close with the story in a, a comic book, right? And that I read in Germany, there's a fictional story um, that I read when I was younger. Um, three grandkids go to their wealthy grandpa and ask for an advance on their allowance to attend a once-in-a-lifetime festival for the next day in their town. This is a fictional story, right? But their grandpa refuses to give them their allowance early. He says, nope, you'll get it in two days, right? His grandkids tell him, we need that money. We need to go. We want to attend a festival tomorrow in town, right? But grandpa is unwavering. He says, nope, I'll give it to you in two days. So the boys decide to sneak into grandpa's mansion at night and turn all his clocks and calendars forward to skip ahead to the day they'll get their allowance. So grandpa wakes up in the morning and he's confused, right? He sees that something's happened and he believes that he actually missed a day. And since he's so rich and influential, he convinces all his friends, the whole town, and even the news that the world just skipped the day. Again, a fictional story, right? So the grandkids are happy, right? They, their scheme worked. And they collect their allowance to go to the festival. But the festival is canceled, right? The whole town skipped the day because, skipped the, skipped the day forward because of the scheme of the, the kids, right? The day of the festival never happened. Yesterday never happened. How would you live today if yesterday had never happened? If the, if the wrong you have done and the mistakes you have made never happened, you'd be pretty, feeling pretty good about today, right? Hopeful, joyful, right? You'd make new plans today, right? God sees you in that way. He doesn't remember your transgressions from yesterday. There's only today. So I want to encourage you to live for the Lord today because we are promised in His Word. In Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Right? So the purpose for you today is to live for God on this very day. right? And not to remember your sins and to trust God that He forgives you. God bless you.